Welcome to Chasing the Twist. Today we are going to wire up a charging connection for our Goal Zero Yeti 400 generator. Goal Zero has made their generators very adaptable in terms of what, how you can charge it. So you can charge this via solar panels um, that you either buy from Goal Zero or you source yourself. You can charge it from the wall, from so a 110 um, charge, and it comes with a 110 charge adapter. And you can also buy a cigarette. 12 volt DC cigarette lighter adapter. I have two chargers for this for this Yeti 400. Um, a wall charger, which I run off of my shore power input when we are at home or at a campsite, and the 12 volt DC cigarette lighter, which I use when we're driving the van, because then it charges from the alternator. But you'll notice. There's only one input here on the Goal Zero. And so what I've had to do is when we get somewhere, either at home or campground, plug in this one. And when we are about to leave, unplug it and plug in this one. And vice versa, right? So it's always swapping of these two. It's not terrible. Um, it's a bit of a nuisance. I'm more worried about um, just forgetting to switch it and then the, you know from shore power to the 12 volts so then when we're driving around it won't actually be charging um, I'd rather just switch automatically and I was going to build a a relay system um, to do that and like I said cannibalize this and and try to hook that up but then I found a product on the Goal Zero website that is really meant for tying in multiple solar panels into one and that is this four into one adapter so um, it's really I mean it's rather robust which is nice so the build quality this is sort of a hard hard rubber soft plastic uh, casing and it has four um, female connectors here and one male connector here. So the idea is you plug this end into the single charge port and then you plug in either multiple up to four solar panels or what I want to use it for is plugging in my wall adapter 110 here and my 12 volt DC here. Now that would work great if our van, which is a 2008 Ford E350, behaved like any other car that I've ever owned. So, for some reason, um, some reason I, I'm not really sure why, but the Ford E350, the cigarette lighters remain on when the key is off. But they remain on in a low power mode, like a low amp amp amperage mode. So when I plug this in via shore power, and I have it just set up like this, and this is plugged into um, one of the three cigarette lighters. So that is something nice. It has three different power sockets in the Ford E350. However, when I turn the key off, um, this one is still receiving 12 volts but at a very low amperage and I'm not actually sure what it is. It's too low to charge this. When when it's plugged in it, it will say um, instead of no input it will say l low input or low something like that. Um, and So it won't drain the battery in the van which is great um, so I don't have to unplug this all the time. Um, but what's and I can also charge my phone overnight from the van, which I've done. Um, so it has its pros. But the main con is, since it's getting 12, this is going to get a bit, a bit nerdy, right? So since it's getting 12 volts DC, and since this is just a simple um, 4 into 1 
there's no diode or anything that is limiting the power getting back. This goes into what's called float mode. So this gets feedback saying, oh, you're already at 12 volts. I'll just sort of trickle charge you. I'll maintain you. But I don't need to ramp you up. How I'm going to try to fix that is to cut this off and wire it in um, to a wire that is on with the key and off with the key. That way I can leave it all plugged in. When the key is off, um, the shore power wall adapter won't be getting 12 volts from the vehicle and therefore will get a true reading of what the Yeti 400 is sending. And um, when the key is on, um, the worst case is this will just go into float mode and, and this will we'll both be in trickle charge mode so it won't charge very fast but I don't expect um, to have them both plugged in at the same time because the car is only on really when we're driving it so the most that they would ever be on at the same time is you know a few seconds or a few minutes if I happen to turn on the vehicle before I'm plugging the shore power so I'm not worried about that it'll just combine it and that's not a problem last last thing um, let me get it to focus up a little higher. Last thing, so I was looking at this as well, and if you've ever taken a cigarette lighter adapter apart, well, there's usually a fuse in, inside, a, a 10 amp fuse, I think. But So I took this one apart to see what I was dealing with and if I wanted to wire in a fuse in line in addition to whatever line I hooked it up to, and it's just hardwired. There's no fuse in there. So that actually makes my job easier. I can just cut this off and not have to worry about wiring in an inline fuse. That's the plan. I'm going to use this 12 volt wire, cut it off, find a wire in the van, now that's, that's the next hard part, um, that turns on and off with the key and I'll still use this 4 into 1 and, I'll, and it'll look something like this where I have my 12 volt DC in and my um, wall adapter in as well and that way I'll be able to, I won't have to fiddle with it, I won't have to ever swap the import plugs um, I won't have to ever in, you know, teach anybody about that if I lend them my van or something um, you know, you ought to be sure to swap the plugs when you reach the campsite. No, it'll just take care of itself. So that's the plan. Now, the tough part is finding the wire, the appropriate wire in the van. Now that we've talked about the plan of wiring in the charging system to the key, um, I located some old power cable um, from a different 120 battery charger or something that I cut the cable off short from. It, it was ridiculously long. So this should be heavy enough gauge and I've also located my owner's manual for the E-series and I've located the page that covers the fuse box, the fuse panel, uh, the cabin fuse panel. Unless I find something else, I'm going to run it off of fuse number three, which is the delayed accessory overhead console audio. Also, Fords, I think uh, this is common for Fords. It's a combination of the key being off and the door being open, or there's also, I think, a 15 minute delay or something. So once you arrive and you're listening to the radio, you turn your key off, you can even take it out. The radio still plays until you open the door. So that's what the delayed accessory uh, means. So if nothing else, uh, I'm going to tap into uh, these lines here. I'm going to check them of course, right? But my plan is to tap into these with this and then run this run this cable back to where the, the goal zero sits. Let's go out to the van. We're in the van on the driver's side now and we're going to find the fuse box, the fuse panel, which is up under here. Uh, I'm not sure I can even get the camera in there. Um, 
and we'll go from there. Okay, so there it is. Here, for reference, here's the brake and gas pedals. And there is the fuse panel. And it comes with a cover. And there it is. So, I've done some poking around and I did some testing with my multimeter and that fuse does turn on and off with the key. So that's a good candidate. However, it's very difficult to access. Um, so let's remove a few panels and see if we can get better access. First I'm going to remove uh, this, first, I put the steering wheel up, but first I'm going to remove this panel under the steering wheel. And they're just little metal uh, tabs that hold them in. So you should just be able to yank on them. And this is removable um, with four bolts up under here. And they are 5 sixteenths. Now that the four bolts are out, um, you can kind of yank on these two tabs. And then you have not much better access. I ended up going the relay route. So I finally found some wires to use. So I'm using the same accessory audio wire that I was using before as the trigger. Um, and I found the power socket wire on the back of the fuse panel um, that I'm using as the main uh, power source. So I didn't film at all because um, I don't know. I was just running into a lot of snags, and it was it was frustrating enough without trying to uh, to film at all. But in the end, um, I got it to work. So the the switch again is the delayed accessory fuse number three, and the main power is the power socket line fuse which is number 26 actually number 30 is what I ended up going with but you could use either one is for the what they call the cigar lighter and one is for the power socket um, both 20 amps fuses and then you just need to ground it um, and I use the same grounding screw as as I showed before and then you need to run the cable the wire to the actual unit which I did yesterday as well. So it works. You turn the ignition on and it energizes the relay and charges the generator. If you plug in the shore power and you turn and the car is off, that shore power no longer goes up back upstream into the radio, which is the problem I had before. So now I have a functioning charging system, you could say, where it automatically switches between charging from the car and or charging from the shore power. So you'll notice I'm wearing a different shirt, but it's just been a two-day project to get the charging system in place. But it's in there now, and now we're ready for our next camping trip this weekend. So thanks for calling, following along. This video is a bit more uh, technical than other videos, but please subscribe like and comment below Let me know what you'd like to see and Thanks for watching